welcome back to my YouTube channel and to today's video. Um, today I wanted to share a video about things that helped me in my first six weeks postpartum and first six weeks with a baby. So I have a list of five things that I did that really, really helped me. And I really believe it made it my recovery easier, my <laughs> just learning how to be a mom, take care of a baby came a lot better and easier and I feel like my mental health was helped out a lot and, and you know just did so much better because of these things that I did or that I had. And so I just wanted to share five things that really helped me in my first six weeks postpartum as a new mom. So the first one, most important one, having help. Help from family and from friends. And this includes your husband and it includes, you know, your parents, your siblings, anyone who's close to you that you feel that you trust to help you and that you just want to help you. Just having that help and saying yes when people offer the help. For Sam and I, one of the biggest helps was the first week postpartum, both of our families were here and they did so much. We didn't have to cook, we didn't have to clean. They took care of our house. They would hold Liza sometimes so we could nap. They would change her diaper. They helped give her baths. They just did so much to help us out. And then the second week, Sam's mom stayed longer and she just helped us out even more just staying a little longer so we could continue to figure things out and I could continue to recover. And then after that, we had so many friends bring us meals throughout the following week after Sam's mom was gone and after all our family was gone. And with that too, we've had people bring us meals and sometimes they would sit and hold Eliza so we could eat our meals and um, they'd bring extra meals so that we had leftovers so we were fed for so long which was such a big help not having to cook or worry about dinner for a long time was really helpful especially for Sam because Sam was having to do a lot of extra work to take care of us especially because um, of how weak I was for the first few weeks postpartum because of my hemorrhaging and so oh, let me pull this down a little bit there we go, now you can see girl. But anyways, and so it was really, really helpful to have all that help from our family and our friends. And then I've had a friend come over so I could shower one time and she just watched Eliza. We've had friends just kind of come over and hold Eliza so that we can just relax and take a little break. My sister and um, lives here now and Sam's brother and they come over and will help out too. My sister comes over a lot and and she would just hold Eliza and take care of her so that I could go take a nap while Sam was working or at school. Or she would just hold Eliza so I could eat or shower or whatever else that I needed to do. But she's been such a huge help for me um, just coming over all the time and helping out with Eliza. It's been amazing. But... So that's one of the biggest helps for me is definitely having help from family and friends. It's a lifesaver. So when people offer for the help, take it up, take up the help and let them serve you. Let them help you because it's, you need it. And, and they, they offer because they want to help. And so let them. Number two is giving myself a routine but not filling my day with tons of expectations. So basically what I mean by this is, yes, I, I give myself routine throughout the day where it's like a very flexible routine of in the morning, you know, what my morning looks like with um, taking care of Eliza and then getting time to feed myself, you know, eat breakfast, get ready for the day, do my morning stuff that I like to do with my scripture studies and washing my face and everything. Taking that time to do that and finding that time to do that. And then afterwards, 
finding time during the day to, um, with the first six weeks postpartum, I wasn't really working, um, but now I am. But the first six weeks, finding time to just, during the day, do a little bit here and there. And this was more closer to the end of the six weeks. The beginning of the six weeks, I was resting as much as I could. And that was really important. But as I got closer to the end, I started getting with a routine so that um, as Sam went back to school and we both went back to work, we weren't just like jumping in head first. We were slowly figuring it out <laughs> each week as we got closer. And that really helped me being able to figure things out by just getting a little routine with my day, figuring out when Eliza typically will wake up. And I know the first six weeks is very, is variable and it's a flexible schedule. And so for me, it was more like slowly starting to figure it out. And that's why it's like not filling it up with tons to, of expectations, but just kind of slowly starting to figure out a routine, figure out, oh, she wakes up about this time and then her first nap is this time. So um, during her first nap, I can get ready for the day um, and eat breakfast or something, you know, but it's just figuring that out. But the biggest thing is not expecting a lot on yourself. So your routine can be as simple as knowing I've got to eat breakfast in the morning. During the afternoon, I want to take a nap and in the evening this is when I want to start getting her to bed and that could be your routine right now and that's okay but really for me giving myself a routine starting to figure out that routine and really going with it helped a lot especially when Sam went back to school and work and when I started working again it helped so much to have a routine already in place for me then the third one which is also super important is taking a nap with her at least once during the day the first six weeks you are recovering you are tired you are adjusting to this new schedule of never sleeping <laughs> like there's so much that goes into those first six weeks and there's a lot of strain on your body your body is going through a lot your brain is going through a lot and it's just you need rest you need it more than you might realize and even on those days where you feel that extra energy and you're thinking I can do this I can go all day I don't need a nap still take the nap because if you don't then the next day or in a couple days you'll have a pretty crappy day where you'll wish you would have kept up with those naps so that you wouldn't be so sleep deprived <laughs> in the future and I'm speaking from personal experience. I am such a, if I have energy, I wanna go get it. You know, I'm, I wanna keep going and I wanna do as much as I possibly can. And I definitely suffered from that a little bit, but I learned that for myself, I need to just focus on making sure I rest with Eliza. So now instead of getting up at seven in the morning with her and and having us go, I get her down to sleep again after she wakes up to eat around 6.30 or 7. I get her down to sleep again just so that I can sleep a little longer so that we don't end up waking up until 8.30 or 9, which is really, really good for me to not get out of bed until then. And then when I'm feeling tired, I take a nap and I do. I try to take at least one of her naps to not work, not do anything around the house, but to just relax and rest. And sometimes it is, sometimes it's not closing my eyes to go to sleep, but sometimes it's just taking a minute to just kind of relax, breathe, just sit there and do nothing or just watch a show and not focus on anything. But it's really important to take that time at least once a day to let yourself rest, let yourself relax and take a nap with your child. <laughs> then number four is taking care of our home to keep it tidy and clean and taking a little bit of time um, after Eliza goes to bed to clean up house before I go to bed. And this is what I've discovered with myself. I get Eliza down at about, I try to get her to sleep by eight or nine. And so that way like by 8.30 or 9.30, somewhere in that range, I have her in her bassinet um, sleeping so then I can take a little bit of time just like honestly 15 minutes is all I do I don't sweep I don't wipe down counters I literally just pick things up a little bit and just make it so that my home 
is clean and just kind of taken care of. And I've noticed as I just keep up with that, it's a lot easier to keep my home clean for one, but it's also just mentally so much better for me. It helps me so much to just feel happy in my home, feel comfortable in my home and not feel overwhelmed with all the to-dos, but really just feel good with everything. And so for me, that is kind of a big one. That's, that's really important to have my home be clean and, and just nice and tidied for myself. Mentally, it's, it's the biggest help. It really is. And so that's why I do it. So that's why I take the 10 or 15 minutes after she goes to bed to do it because I know it helps me so much the next day, every day. Then number five is getting outside, going on walks, just getting some fresh air and sunshine every day. And for me, with um, the early days of postpartum, it was so nice to be able to just move a little bit obviously we wouldn't do a long walk so we'd do very short ones just like right around our little loop here um and it'd be in the evening when it wasn't hot because we had her in the beginning of august so it's so summer and hot and sam would always come with me it'd always be us together because i was definitely not going to go alone my first six weeks postpartum and so really it was um it was really refreshing for me because I spent all day, every day inside the house for those first six weeks because I wouldn't go to the store. I wouldn't go, you know, we wouldn't take Eliza to the store and I didn't want to go myself. And so the only time I would go outside or leave the house is to go on a walk. And so that really was nice for me and it kept me sane and it kept me feeling good and it did feel so nice to move my body a little bit so that my legs weren't getting super stiff and it felt so nice to feel the sun on my face and to breathe in the fresh air outside and just be outside for a little bit it's so good for you and especially when you've had a baby it's a great way to slowly start I don't know, doing postpartum exercise, but not pushing your body too far. And like I said, we would do very short little walks. We were not climbing up hills. We were not um, going for miles. We were doing a little loop around the, the apartment complex. And honestly, it'd be like we'd walk to get the mail and walk back and that would be our walk. And so <laughs> it was super simple and just what I needed. And then, you know, if I wanted some more time outside, we'd just sit outside rather than walking, but it's it was so good for me to go outside. But yeah, so those are my five things that really, really helps me out the first six weeks postpartum and honestly have continued to help me out. Um, now I'm, we're about, we're about 10 weeks postpartum now is what I'd say and we, and I'm still continuing these things, honestly. Like, I still have help from my sister. She comes over a lot still and helps out. She's the designated babysitter, so someday when Sam and I, maybe next week, maybe in a month, who knows, when Sam and I start, do our first date night without her, um, she'll be the babysitter and she'll come over, but she also comes over still all the time and she, like just um, last week, she came over and held Eliza and I went and took a nap in the bed because I was feeling really tired and it was really helpful for me. But, and then I still have a routine. And in fact, my routine is more detailed now than it was the first six weeks postpartum. And it's more organized and, and I feel like it, it's more, it has more structure to it because she has consistent wake windows now and consistent uh, like nap times, you know, she'll be awake for so long and then be ready for another nap. And then and she'll wake up in the morning about the same time every morning and then go to bed about the same time every night. So it's easier to have a schedule because of that, but I still don't fill it with tons of expectations. I still don't get upset at myself if I don't get everything done I wanted to because you really, you can't, you can't know what every day will look like. You can't know if your baby's gonna be more fussy or more needy that day. You don't know if she'll have a hard harder time with her naps that day and take less naps. 
or if she'll take just multiple shorter naps or you know if she'll throw up and you'll need to give her a longer bath like you just really can't you can't know what's gonna happen with the day and so you just have to go each day with an open mind understanding that you're a mom and your baby comes first and your mental health comes first and if your kitchen doesn't get clean that day it's okay and if it doesn't get cleaned the next day, it's okay, because this is this is how life goes, and you just gotta be patient with yourself. And then the taking the nap, I still do it because the sleep deprivation is real, and I, yeah, I have gotten pretty sick um, a little bit ago. I got pretty sick because I was feeling because I was not taking the naps like I should have. I stopped doing it for a couple weeks. And I really was affected by it. And so now I really do go and I take a nap with her. And once a day, I try to get the sleep because I need it. And I try to go to bed um, as close to when I put her down as I can because the longer I sleep before she wakes up for that first feeding at night, the better for me. So sleeping, I still take very seriously. And if I don't take a nap, I at least take time to just rest. And then taking care of our home, I do it even more now. I take um, one room each day to just clean up a little bit and then I do take 10 or 15 minutes at night still to tidy up my home. And that really has been a lifesaver for me. And then I really do still try to get outside every day. I try to go for a walk or just get some fresh air somehow because it's so good for my mental health. It's so good for me and Eliza both physically and it's fun for her to get a change of scenery. So these five things are things that are still helpful now that I'm still doing and honestly will probably be helpful for the whole first year of her life and on. But yeah, so if you're a new mom, I hope you are doing the things to take care of yourself and your baby. I hope you are not putting, pushing yourself too much, but that you're letting yourself rest and relax and you're not overwhelming yourself with too much. And I hope you're just having the most wonderful time and just really soaking up all these precious moments with your sweet little one because they are so, so wonderful. And it's a beautiful time in life. So enjoy it. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope these five tips really did help you. Have a great day, bye.